Alors, bon, bonjour à ceux qui sont présents. Voilà, je m'appelle Grégory euh, donc Barnil, ici. Euh, donc, ce soir, on va avoir le, le, le webinar de Oran, qui est gentiment présent avec nous et qui va nous présenter sa méthode en taquet moxibustion. Euh, un petit avant-goût d'une heure pour, euh, en vue de sa formation qu'il va donner à Lausanne euh, le week-end du 14, 15, 16 juillet, donc dans un peu plus d'un mois. Euh, donc voilà, je, on va entendre peut-être encore une ou deux personnes à moins qu'on commente. Je sais qu'il y a des gens qui se sont inscrits, mais qui, seront en, qui verront ça en replay. Donc on va quand même commencer. Il ne faut pas perdre trop de temps. Je sais qu'on a tous des agendas un petit peu compliqués. C'est le week-end. Donc euh, voilà, nous allons pouvoir commencer. Merci de vous être inscrit, euh, d'avoir cet intérêt pour cette, euh, cette formation avec euh, Oran Kiviti, euh, à qui je vais laisser la parole. Voilà, oh, Oran, if you want to start, uh, uh, introduce to yourself and um, just enjoy. Et, et, et si vous avez des questions, vous pouvez les envoyer sur le chat et moi je, je passe à Oran. Hein. Je vais bloquer le son de tout le monde pour que ce soit plus confortable. Uh, as I said, Oran, I will cut the sound off from, from everybody. And if mm. anyone wants to, to ask questions uh, during your, the, the presentation, uh, they can send it via the chat and I will uh, follow it to okay. you, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Greg. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you for attending on this Friday evening. Um, over here, it's a little bit later. I'm in Taiwan currently, uh, but as you know, I'll be coming to Europe uh, next month and, uh, and in July. So I'm going to spend some time introducing, I'll do this in two phases. Uh, first of all, uh, I'll do a quick presentation uh, and then about nine or 10 slides. And then after that, uh, we can take a few questions on that. And then I'll start to talk about practical applications, like, for example, how we can uh, treat sore throat and midline pain with Ontake. So I'll have to change presentations at that point, and there'll be my screen will go blank for a second and then uh, come back, hopefully, with some nice slides. So um, let me start off with a very simple question. What is Ontake? And the best way for me to describe Ontake is to play a very short video. So let me do that now and I'll, I'll commentate uh, as the video plays. So basically you get a tube of bamboo and you fill it up with moxawol. As you can see here, let me enlarge that for you. So you fill it up with moxawol and then you tamp it down with a little piece of wood and make it firm and then light it. And once it's lit, it becomes warm and you can tap anywhere on the body using all kinds of different theoretical models. And it's some of those that I'll talk about this evening. So you can see I was just uh, using it in someone's face there. Uh, right. So what is on uh, We've answered that to some degree. It's a piece of bamboo which is heated. Uh, and it's heated because it's filled with moxawol. And it acts like uh, a moxa box, essentially, but it's very mobile and it's very agile. A moxa box, as you know, is something which is large and you fill it up with moxa and you put it on someone's back and you kind of move it very slowly and it gets intolerably hot. You have to keep moving it. Whereas on take, um, I've got one here is uh, just a little piece of bamboo and you can move it very quickly and rhythmically and that rhythm is something that we'll talk about in a minute and especially on the course so it's very safe to apply and it's very simple to apply and you can uh, it's quite easy to learn uh, i'll say a few words about uh the Ontake origin story, because a lot of people assume that it's part of the canon of Chinese medicine. It's like an ancient device that's been used for forever, but actually it hasn't. It's really new. Um, the first time we hear about it in, in the literature is in 1992. And it's possible there was a guy called uh, Yamashita, and he was probably using it during the, in the 1960s. 
Uh, but it's first mentioned in print in 1992, where he says, hey, guys, there's this um, new Moxa device and you can fill it up with Moxa and you can apply it on the skin and it's very good for pain. Uh, there was a very famous acupuncture, uh, moxibustion practitioner called Fukaya, and his son is now in his late 80s, uh, Hideo Shinma. And Shinma Sensei uh, has spent a lot of time, he's actually a musician, he's a guitar player, but he spent a lot of time um, collating his father's work. And he wrote a piece on uh, bamboo in 2012, like a short pamphlet. So as you can see, it's kind of mentions in print are in the last 50 years and practically no one had heard of it before early 2012, 2015. Uh, so Shinra Sensei and I both started writing about it at the same time, me in English, him in Jap Japanese. It's the new kid on the block, which means there's no orthodoxy, there's no bishop of Onteke who says you must do it this way or you must not do it this way. So it's, it's a new thing and uh, we can use it in a number of ways. Today, the way it's been used in Japan is as a branch tool. So if you've got pain in the shoulder, oh, where's my shoulder there? So if you've got pain in the shoulder, you apply Onteke to the shoulder. If you've got pain in the wrist, you apply Onteke to the wrist. So that's how it was used up until uh, 2012, 2015. And then those uses have changed because it can be applied with any kind of theoretical model. Uh, I'll just say a quick few things about its name because when it was first mentioned in the literature, it was called uh, Take means bamboo, by the way. So it was called um, Take no Aku. So bamboo, bamboo ring moxibustion. And then uh, when Shinma Sensei came along, he called it Take Zutsu Q, so bamboo, bamboo tube moxibustion. And then when it was sold in Sankei in Japan, they called it Tan Take, they called it short bamboo to contrast it with a longer bamboo that they sold for um, Fukaya moxibustion. And when I started using it, I had a Japanese patient and I said, you know, Tan Take doesn't really describe what it does very well. Could we call it warm bamboo? She said, yes, you could call it ontake. And I started to call it ontake and I wrote to Sanke and said, I'm calling it ontake. And they thought it was a much better name. So now it's known as ontake. So you can see historically, um, it won't be mentioned as ontake before 2012. Uh, if you do find it in the literature, it will be bamboo tube or bamboo ring, moxibustion. So we can use it in all kinds of ways. We can use it to treat the root. I won't talk about that today. Uh, and we can use it as a branch treatment. And that's how it was used very much in Japan. So if someone's got pain somewhere in the shoulder, you tap on the shoulder or you roll on the shoulder. These days, uh, because I've done some work uh, adapting it with Dr. Tan's pain, pain relief treatments or Dr. Tan balancing treatment, you can use it for pain relief and it's very, very effective. And there are other ways in which you can use it for pain relief and I'll talk about those in the second lecture today. And finally, you can use it as an adjunctive treatment. And by this I mean that it doesn't need to change or disrupt in any way what you already do. So if you do TCM, then you can use Ontake to augment your treatments. And if you do Meridian therapy or Japanese acupuncture or Dr. Tan balancing therapy, then it's something that you can just bring in to, to as an additional tool, much in the way that you do with cupping. But cupping has very specific aims, whereas Ontake can really be used to supplement and augment the treatment that you're already doing. So it's a very useful treatment. And I have to say that I use Ontake on every single patient, particularly on the back shoe points as a way of closing the treatment. So I'll do what I normally do with acupuncture and then I'll finish with uh, going up and down the back uh, as a way to close the treatment and to, to, to strengthen the pulse. 
So that's uh, the kind of ways that we can apply it. So it's not like you're going to learn a new system and it's going to displace what you already do. It's more like it's there to help and strengthen and give momentum to what you already do. There are different theoretical models that we can use. Um, one of the models that we'll do on the course is um, Dr. Manica's meridian frequencies. I haven't got a slide of Dr. Manica here, but of course we'll talk about him a lot more um, during the two-day course. And he essentially was um, a very um, prolific researcher and medical doctor who did a huge amount of research into um, the meridian system. And one of the things that he discovered is that the meridians respond to beats per minute. Uh, so specific beats per minute. So for example, the large intestine channel responds to um, the frequency of 108 beats per minute. So if you roll the ontake at Dr. Manica's meridian frequency for the large intestine, whilst you're working on the large intestine channel, you can get extraordinary effects in softening the uh, the soft tissue. Uh, so if you're working on gallbladder 21 at gallbladder frequency, then your shoulders will relax really, really fast. And this is something that's um, one of the remarkable things about uh, ontake therapy is the way uh, how tight muscles get soft really, really quickly when you apply them with these meridian frequencies. Another theoretical model that we can use is deficiency excess. And of course, you're all familiar with that um, from your acupuncture practices. And this, uh, in a way, is a refinement of that because it's deficiency excess as defined through palpation. So we'll find areas of deficiency on the skin, which, which feels weak or flaccid, and areas of excess, which feel uh, tight or hard. And we balance the two with ontake. There are also various holographic models that can be used. And by holographic, I mean, um, for example, ear acupuncture is a holographic system because we say that the ear represents the whole body. So there are other holographic mappings on the body. For example, Dr. Tan's uh, holographic mappings, his normal mirror and reverse mirror, his normal image and reverse image, where you can map out the whole body on the arm or you can map out the whole body on the leg. And also Hirata zones, which is day three of our course, which is a, a very exciting kind of holographic mapping, uh, which responds very much to heat. Hirata uh, lived about 100 years ago and he devised the first holographic mappings in the acupuncture world. So all of these things can be integrated into your practice. Uh, let's take a closer look at an ontake. So here's a, here's a representation of one. And um, let me see, have I got my... I didn't bring my pointer to hand, so I'll use a... I'll use a pen instead. Okay, so uh, basically it's a piece of bamboo. Um, oh, I'm mirroring here. So it's a piece of bamboo. It's filled with lots of stick. And uh, you can see that it's got various edges. It's rounded at the bottom and rounded at the top. And you can use, therefore, any of these surfaces uh, to treat the skin. So you can mm, tap with the lighted mouth. And you can also roll with the, the side of the bamboo and you can press with a rounded lip and you can roll, you can knock, you can uh, strike percussively, or you can press like a kind of friction technique. So each part of the bamboo can be used. The standard bamboo is about three and a half centimeters in diameter and the skin the thickness of the skin, the bamboo skin itself, is three to four millimeters thick. And the whole thing is roughly five centimeters in length. Now, there are different bamboos, which are, I, I might talk about um, if we have time, which are slightly longer. And there's a, there's a, there's, you notice that I was holding 
uh, this one, which is uh, rather longer. It's double the length. That's 10 centimeters. That's called the super ontake, which has different um, advantages and disadvantages to a standard ontake. And then we also have um, a mini ontake. So a mini ontake is the, the same size, the same length as a normal ontake, but you'll see it's much narrower. Uh, and that can be used with children or with people who don't like the heat so much or very sensitive or on the face. So there are kind of variant, various sizes. But this size that I'm showing you here in this slide is really the standard. So, okay, what I'm going to do now um, is see, uh, I'm going to load this slide on sore throat and midline pain. And whilst that's loading, then I'm happy to take any questions for the uh, lectures so far. So don't worry if my image disappears for a second, that's just because I'm putting a new file in. So yeah, uh, if there are any questions, do go ahead and um, ask them. Uh, all right, I don't have any questions via the chat, but uh, if people are happy to, to ask any questions to Oran, just go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Mel. No one? Okay, everything is clear, I guess. <laughs> Maybe later on. Or, or on. Okay, all right. Okay, then I will So let's just be clear. So what we're doing is we're applying heat to uh, the skin. And this heat and also uh, a kind of um, percussion or rhythm is what's getting our effect. So to treat sore throat, I'm going to revisit our thinking about yin and yang. Um, so let me go to this slide and uh, talk about yin and yang. So yin and yang, uh, we can think of heaven and earth. Heaven is superior and uh, earth is inferior beneath, beneath our feet. So that creates a vertical line between the head and the feet. And we can think of that vertical line um, as a plane of motion. So we have a line going from top to bottom, uh, which divides the body into right and left sides. So a line coming straight down the center. And we also have a line um, coming down the body again from heaven and earth, which separates front from back. And we also have a line uh, coming across at the navel, which separates the body into top and bottom sections. So in other words, in anatomy, we have sagittal, frontal, and transverse planes. But these are all aspects of yin and yang. And if you look at the diagram, you can see that these three intersecting lines create four anterior quadrants and four posterior quadrants. So we can see the four anterior quadrants here. OK. Well, if we have four anterior quadrants and four posterior quadrants, then that can give us some rules of treatment if we're going to follow the ideas of yin and yang. And that is that the upper quadrants treat the lower quadrants and vice versa, and the front quadrants treat the back quadrants and vice versa, and the left quadrants treat the right quadrants and vice versa. So if we divide, if we use yin and yang to divide the body up, we get four anterior quadrants and four posterior quadrants. And then we just use simple principles of opposites. And we find that there are areas where we can influence areas. All right, let's think about sore throat then. We can then think, if we're going to treat sore throat, then we want to figure out where on the body it is. Or, and of course, we can use this model to figure that out. So sore throat 
is uh, oops, I've done the wrong slide. Let go. Let me go back. Yeah, sore throat is superior, and it's anterior, and it's on the midline, or it's slightly to the left, or it's slightly to the right. Sometimes people come in and their sore throat is is much worse on one side than the other. So in terms of um, opposites, then we can think we want to find somewhere on the body that's inferior, posterior, and on the midline. And if the sore throat is slightly on the left, then we want to be slightly on the right. And if the sore throat is slightly on the right, then we want to be slightly on the left. So you can see what that looks like here. You can see just using this quadrant theory uh, that in order to treat sore throat, we want to be looking somewhere around the sacrum. And that's where we're going to uh, be applying on Take. Okay, let me go back. So in terms of quadrant theory, uh, we've found our area to treat, which is going to be on the sacrum. But there are also channel pairings that we can use, and channel pairings can be a very dynamic way to add more more momentum to our treatments. So, of course, in terms of channel pairings, we can think of internal, external, and yin and yang. So let's think about the channels that go through the throat. So there's, of course, uh, there are two main channels. Uh, one is the kidney channel. And the kidney channel comes up uh, the abdomen, and then it comes into the torso and the chest. Then at kidney 27, it stops just on, under, the, under the clavicle. But then you've got uh, this deep pathway that comes in from there up into the root of the tongue. And then you have the renmai, of course, coming all the way along the midline and uh, coming up also uh, to here. So if we think, well, what's internally, externally related to the renmai and the kidney channel, then we've got two candidates. Of course, we've got the dumai and we've got the bladder channel. So now through quadrant theory, we have an area to treat. And through channel theory, we have two channels to treat. So to treat sore throat, we are going to treat the bladder channel and the do channel on the sacrum. Right. Now, can I just check with you guys? Can you hear the sound? Uh, when, did you hear that sound on the video when I played it? You did? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. That's great. So then that makes my life a lot easier. The first thing you want to do is check the reactions on the sacrum. So you can check for temperature changes or you can check for puffiness, moistness or dryness. And you can also check for pressure pain reactions. Whatever you find, that's what you want to try and treat. And once you've made a note of them, you can start to apply bamboo. We're just going to light our bamboo. And we want to make sure it's not too hot. So just tap against the palm of your hand and then against your wrist. If it's comfortable on your wrist, it should be comfortable on your patient. And we'll start by tapping lightly with the bamboo. And then you can get your patient to swallow and see whether there's been a change in the sensation of the sore throat. Then you can start to do rolling. 
rolling is slightly deeper. So just rolling with the bamboo, working into the tissues of the sacrum. And once again, you can stop, you can get the patient to sit up and swallow again and see if there's been any change. You can also roll longitudinally along the line of the sacrum. Now, sometimes the sore throat will be more on one side than the other, and we want to treat the opposite side. So if the sore throat is on the left-hand side, you want to focus on the right-hand side of the sacrum. If the sore throat is on the right-hand side, you want to focus on the left-hand side of the sacrum. And if the sore throat is right in the middle, you focus more on the midline. So let's assume that someone has sore throat on the right, we would be rolling slightly more on the left here. And once again, check for reactions. If the pressure pain has changed, then you can finish. Puffiness is something that changes more slowly because it's a more deficiency sign. So we can roll a little bit longer where there are puffy reactions. All right, so that's how we treat sore throat. Uh, but we can take these principles now and extend them further so that we can treat midline pain, not just on the throat, but maybe at the, pu at the pubic area, or maybe at the sacrum, or maybe uh, midline pain in the middle of the back or at the front. So let me talk about how we can extend those ideas. Uh, so we saw earlier when we treated sore throat that we were using the sacrum to treat the throat area. So of course now, conversely, we can use it the other way around. And to try and explain this, um, I'd like you to imagine, um, I'm sure you've all seen a um, um, Dracula movie where at some point uh, the intrepid hero gets a wooden stake and a mallet and kind of uh, gets a, a, a wooden stake and impales, impales the, 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 the vampire with this wooden stake in the heart. Now, if you imagine, I think you can see it just about in the camera here. Um, let me let me get rid of that slide there. Hang on a sec. Um, yeah. So, if you imagine this is a person, and they have pain in the upper part of the body, then the way you want to treat is to work on the lower part of the body. And if they have pain in the lower part of the body, then you're going to be treating uh, in the upper part of the body. And if they've got pain in the mid part of the body, uh, so mid back pain, then you want to be treating directly opposite uh, in the mid part of the epigastrium and those kidney points uh, around uh, level with REM 12. So you can see that this idea of the, the, the stake going through uh, can be used as a way to just imagine where it is you're supposed to be treating. Uh, so that makes things easier. And I can also show you uh, how we can think about these things. Uh, yeah, so if they've got pain in this part of the body up, up here, so my camera is mirroring, which so I always put the stick in the wrong place. Uh, so there you go. So someone's got pain in the sore throat or sore throat. So we were working down here uh, at the sacrum. But if we think of uh, mid back pain, then they've got pain uh, here. So then we want to be thinking about treating on the abdomen directly opposite the pain. Now, this is actually an idea that you're very familiar with already, uh, because 
everyone has heard that if someone has hemorrhoids, then you should do Moxa uh, do 20. So uh, when I studied in China, um, they had these little kind of Moxa stick hats that they used to put on people and they would wear this Moxa stick, uh, which would burn on the top of their head. And uh, it was like a, ca a candlestick holder. So the Moxa stick was not directly on the point. It was just kind of held an inch away from the point. And they would wear it with a little strap and walk around the hospital like this. So this is, in other words, the stick is this time not going horiz uh, horizontally, it's going vertically. And it's coming from do 20 to affect the lowest part of the body. So from the highest point of the body to the lowest point of the body. And I'm sure you've all heard of do 20 for hemorrhoids. So that's the same principles being used. And what is less usual, and I think this is the nice thing about Onteke is that normally when we, we treat, we use needles so we have to put lots of needles in and dr tan's system for pain relief you put a few different needles in but with ontake you're just working along a meridian you're working along a line so you're not actually inserting into points you're treating lines and regions so that means that these kidney points on the front really come into their own so when you think of um ren 8 ren 8 corresponds to do 14 so kidney 16 is somewhere like the jiaji points uh, on either side of do 14. So when people have pain in the back of the neck, you can work on those kidney points leading down to kidney 11. So from kidney 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, and that will affect the bladder channel. And that's really a, a nice way to treat posterior neck pain is by working on uh, these uh, REN points and do points with ontake. So I have a question from uh, Shai, I guess. Is there, if there is pain at the side of the head, what would be the opposite? The side of the head or the side of the neck? Yes. Side of the head. head. Right. Um, in this model, I'm really working on the torso more or less up to here. Uh, so using this kind of model. And then uh, for the side of the neck, I would use, I would tend to move sideways more towards the hips. Uh, but in, this model is very much about treating midline pain on the torso. Uh, so uh, really from the throat to the pubic symphysis to the sacrum and then back up to here. So uh, it's, th there are different ways that we would treat pain on the head. And I would use Dr. Tan's models for that. And there are, uh, that, that's a different lecture. So yeah, that, that's shy. Thank you for that. I, I would simply use a different model for treating pain on the side of the head. Okay, so in this video, I'm working um, on the sternum and just below to treat sacral pain. The first thing you want to do is start off with palpation. So particularly palpating on the sternum, looking for pressure pain reactions. So there might be some bruising or tight feeling in here. You can also look a little bit lateral and there might be some uh, tenderness coming out onto the kidney channel. Once you've found those reactions, there might be a sense of puffiness, pressure pain, coldness or uh, roughness or dryness. Once you've found those reactions, then you want to treat them. Okay, start off with lighting the bamboo. Okay, and then uh, you want to do two temperature tests. So just make sure it's not too hot on your palm. If it's comfortable on your palm, then just go to your wrist, which is more sensitive. And then let's start working on these reactions. So you can start off just with a light tapping. And let the skin start to get warm. And then particularly for these uh, pressure pain reactions, we can do rolling. So start off with light rolling. 
And then you can roll a little bit more firmly. You can even roll along the sternum. And then if there were reactions along the kidney channel, you can treat those. So in particular, if the sacral pain is more on the left on the person, then you want to treat on the opposite side on the right. If the sacral pain is more on the right, then you want to treat more on the left. And you might find reactions on the midline, slightly lateral, or on the kidney channel directly. And you can press with the lip of the bamboo or roll until you feel that these changes, these reactions have changed. So you can ask your patient if they feel uh, more comfortable when you press. Keep going. Okay, so that was the last video and uh, let's see if you have any questions about Ontake. So there, there is one question uh, in the chat. Do you, you want to read it or you want me to, to read it aloud? Oh, could, you, could you read it out loud? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a question from Mel C. Uh, my question is about neck pain, which you link to the abdomen. But I think, uh, in bracket, if I understand the theory that there is also another way to treat neck pain, which must be the transverse side, so that we have different choices to treat neck pain, uh, abdomen or windpipe, for example. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, th th there are different ways to treat neck pain and there are different, um, for me, I, I always like to take the line of least resistance. So if, if there's posterior neck pain, then I'll always go to these lower kidney points. If there's pain at the sides, then I tend not to use this model so much uh, because sides are not, th th this, this model that I'm teaching is very much for midline symptoms. So the relationship between the ren mai and the du mai. If we start to get involved in gallbladder and small intestine and those other channels around the side of the neck, then maybe we'll use different models. But there is a way, I have found a correspondence between gallbladder 26 and uh, that mid axillary line uh, that tends to work. Uh, if you find tight bands of tension around there, then that will often release the sides of the neck. Uh, so there are different ways to work with, with neck pain, but if it's on the midline, then you can use this model. N'hésitez pas à poser des questions ceux qui, si vous avez des questions hein, sur ces méthodes et puis aussi sur le, le week-end de formation qui aura lieu au mois de juillet. On est là pour vous répondre aussi. Uh, Oran, may, may I ask you what, what will be the, the, the main difference between the two levels, level one and level two, maybe, if you yeah. can explain that to, to yeah. people? And I've also seen that someone's asked if it can be used for peripheral neuropathy. So, yeah, uh, yeah um, just saw that. Yeah. Okay. So, level one, we can think of it as um, level one is composed of two days. So, the first day is all about loading, lighting, and applying bamboo with different techniques at different frequencies. So it's really all the kind of manual skills. And we'll also, in order to do that, we'll have, um, we'll spend the time doing a whole body routine. So we'll work on the arms and legs, uh, back and torso and uh, abdomen. So we basically spend a lot of time working on techniques like how do you apply bamboo, how do, you do, how do you do rolling, how do you do tapping, how do you do percussive techniques, and then we'll, we'll work on the whole body. And that will give you an idea and really get you familiar with applying bamboo on any part of the body. 
And day two is the really exciting day because it's um, Dr. Tan's pain relief models. And these uh, ways for relieving pain are very, very quick. So you can expect them to work very quickly. And uh, then we'll talk about dosage and we'll talk about branch treatments, like how do you treat diarrhea? How do you treat sinusitis with Ontake? Day three, which is level two, is using Hiratazones. And Hiratazones is another holographic system. And this is something that's very useful as a way to um, increase the momentum of your treatment. So for example, if you've got someone and you're treating them very much because they, you know, they're kind of like a liver pattern or they're a spleen pattern, they have a lot of digestive weakness, then you can use Dr. Manica's spleen zone, for example, on the arm and his spleen zone on the leg and his spleen zone on the abdomen. Uh, and you can really strengthen the spleen. And not only that, but you can, you can give on tachy to your patients because it's very easy to use and safe to apply. And you can say, look, this is the spleen zone. So can you just go and tap on this every day between now and next time you come? So you'll start to get much better results and you get your patients involved in the results. So Hirata's kind of dream was to, to create a, a home therapy for people to treat themselves with. And uh, I find Hirata's zones very useful for treating myself. And uh, I find it very useful for my patients because I can give them bamboo and say, look, um, can you give your husband, uh, can you give your wife treatment every day, just like a couple of minutes with an ontake on these two areas here. Uh, and they don't have to be very precise. They don't have to learn how to, you know, roll moxicones Japanese style. They don't have to needle. They can just apply on take and it becomes like a really useful adjunctive therapy. So that's level two. But level one is really going to get you started in terms of your own treatments, uh, relieving pain, uh, relieving symptoms, and also uh, sometimes strengthening the root. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about root treatment. Okay, many thanks. Uh, there was a question about neuropathy, and that, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. That's from uh, Nancy. Okay, uh, so the answer is the short answer is yes, and the the way that we do it is by using meeting points. So, for example, spleen six, uh, and we can do a lot of rolling at spleen six uh, because spleen six is the intersection of kidney, liver, and spleen we can roll at spleen, Dr. Manica's spleen frequency, which is 132, and Dr. Manica's liver frequency, which is 108, and Dr. Manica's kidney frequency, which is 120 beats per minute. And uh, that's kind of an abstraction if I just talk about this frequency. So let me let you hear it. Um, I hope you can all hear that. That's 120 beats per minute. Uh, oh, there's something wrong with my app. There you go. So uh, that's what 120 beats per minute sounds like. So you are um, rolling with the bamboo at that frequency. And that's what we'll be learning on uh, day, day one and two uh, in level one. And that's very useful for in peripheral neuropathy. Ontake has a sense of um, increasing blood flow. Uh, so where, where the tissue is deficient, then you accelerate the flow of qi and blood. So it's, it's really uh, very useful for that. And I use it all the time. Okay, great. I have an, another, another question from Julien. Yeah. Uh, can this technique be used regardless of the cause of the pain? Yes. Yeah. So let's um, make a distinction between root treatment and branch treatment. So in Japanese acupuncture, uh, root treatment is considered to be the most important component of your treatment. And by root tr treatment, what I mean is regulation of the body's energy. And we do this in various ways. So in TCM, we say oh, if someone's spleen deficient, they're spleen yang deficient, we give them 
herbs to strengthen spleen yang, or we give them, we needle stomach 36 and spleen 6, for example. In meridian therapy, we, we treat the spleen and we follow it up with its mother channel, uh, pericardium. And in Dr. Manica's system, we, we, we find the root imbalance. So all of those root treatments are considered to bring order to a system that is disordered. And I'll give you an analogy for this. Um, when you go to visit a friend uh, and you arrive at their front door, you ring on the doorbell. And then that doorbell sends a signal into the house and someone inside the house hears the signal. It causes movement in the house and then that person comes and opens the door. So we can't say it's the doorbell that opened the door. In, what happened is that the doorbell sent a signal and that's what we're doing with acupuncture. We're working on the outside of the house and we're sending a signal from the outside to the inside. So it's not the needling that does anything is what the needling sends information which creates movement within the body and then that movement rectifies what's going on so that's the idea of root treatment and of course to do root treatment you have to know what's going on but for pain pain is a symptom so when we treat pain we're working at the level of the branch so branch treatment you're just trying to do stuff that fixes stuff or do stuff that relieves stuff. So if you've done your root treatment and you've done your root treatment effectively, then you can then move on to branch treatment. And then it doesn't matter what the cause of the pain is. You just do the branch treatment and that's how it goes. But what we don't do is we don't do pain relief treatments without doing some kind of root treatment because then we're not really fixing the problem. So I, I hope that that answered that question, Julia. Thank you. Okay, another question from Shai. What type of moxa do you use? Hmm. Good question. Uh, I use uh, what's called a semi-pure uh, moxa. Now, moxa um, can be refined in various ways and uh, if you do a search on YouTube you'll if you do a search for my name and um, moxa farm or moxibustion or something you'll find a video of me visiting a moxa factory in Japan and showing all the different stages of refinement of how they refine moxa now the moxa that you're probably used to is the green moxa from China, which is the kind of stuff that you find inside a moxa stick or that you put in a moxa box. And it's very, it has a lot of particulate matter. It has a lot of um, twiggy, twiggy bits and dust. And if you put that inside an ontake, then it fall, bits fall out when you're doing these percussive techniques. And those bits are hot and they feel uncomfortable. So that Chinese coarse moxa is not suitable for ontake. What you need to have is a semi-refined, it's called semi-pure moxa, like wakakuza moxa. And uh, I think in Europe, um, DocSave do a four-star uh, a four-star moxa. Anyway, there will be stuff in the handouts uh, that you have on the course, which point you in the direction of a supplier for moxa and uh, the kind of moxa that you can use. And when you use these more refined moxas, you can see it's yellow, it's not, it's not green, it's yellow, then they uh, have far less of this particular matter, particulate matter. They're much less twiggy, it's much more of the leaf and less of the twig. So when you tap them, nothing drops out. And that's, that's an important consideration. So that's a very useful question. Thank you, Shai. I think you all know that I'm going to be coming to Lausanne and uh, teaching with Greg at the school uh, in July. And uh, we thought that, that we would, um, you're gonna do a discount, aren't you, for people on this, on this webinar, if people enroll before Tuesday, is that right? That's correct, that, that's correct. If, uh, if you enroll or you decide to, to register for this course in July, you will get a, 
uh, the, the 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 normal rate as if you were uh, I think on the on the website it says members and non-members and the different rates. So if you are already a member of uh, the association, the EOATC, which is the school on uh, part or our, our part. Uh, you can get this, the, the, if you're not a member of this association, you can get the same, same rate, basically. So, mm -hmm. which is a good, uh, good discount. Okay. So, right. but you have to register before, before Tuesday. So, so we can just make sure we have enough people as well. And what, what time on Tuesday? For, for, uh, that, that will be, that will be evening, Tuesday evening. Okay. Close, close the business. Yeah, by, by, yeah. cl closing time will be 7 PM, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So if you can send us the the uh, email and um, from the from the website, uh, I will send you the the details if needed. Yeah, I would say that um, the kind of teaching that you're going to get is going to be very practical. So there will be some theory, but um, always broken up with practice, and. Uh, yeah, the, the, there are various rules with Onteke. So the three, the three, the spoiler, a spoiler alert here, but one of the rules is practice, practice, practice. Yeah, we just need to practice and do it physically. You know, need to, to embody the techniques. It's not just theory, but we're actually doing it on each other. So be prepared to be a model and be prepared to practice on uh, different people uh, different genders within your within your groups and to swap over and do lots of practice with each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just one more question I have for maybe for everybody, but I believe that you you will send us uh, like a file with what what we need to 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 bring out for the day, like uh, those mox the moxa, or you will you be providing us with uh, yeah, some equipment or yeah so in terms of um ontake then uh there will be um ontake for you to to buy or purchase on the course in terms of moxa um i think the school we can we can order a, a bag of moxa and uh what we usually do is prepare some starter packs for people so if people want a small like 20 gram bag uh, to, to to take home so they can get started, then they can do that. And of course, we'll provide moxa for people to practice with during the class. Yeah. So um, you don't really need to bring wear loose clothing. <laughs> loose clothing. So if people come in wearing really tight jeans, then it's hard to to practice on the legs and stuff. So wear tracksuit mm -hmm. bottoms or shorts. I don't know what the weather will be like on that day, but uh, yeah, just uh, wear relaxed clothing, loose clothing. Um, okay. I was going to say one other thing. Uh, yeah, that's right. People often say, is it smoky? No, we can't use, you know, it's like, is it very smoky? And, and the answer is surprisingly no. It's very unsmoky. So compared to a moxa stick, it's very, very little smoke. So somehow because it's enclosed in, in, in the ontake, and because it's quite De pre compress quite tightly, then it tends not to smoke very much. There is a little bit of smoke, but not much. Yeah. So what I'm going to do um, is I'll I'll edit. I'll I'll download this from Zoom and edit it, uh, and then uh, I'll make a video of it and send the link to everybody. I've got everybody's email address because you've all registered through through my Calendly. So uh, with your permission, I'll just send you the email directly. Uh, I mean, the link directly to your email. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. And I will uh, personally, I will I will add my uh, email address on the chat if you have uh, any further questions about the course. Uh, don't hesitate to to send me uh, an email and I will reply uh, pretty quickly. Yeah, do, you want, do you want to put the <laughs> the the URL of the event? You have a, an event, don't you? So you could put that in the chat. Yes, I do. I yeah. do. That's there. You go. You have my email and the link for the course. I will send 
you as well. All right, great. So thank you, Aran, for, for your time. I know it's late in Taiwan, so <laughs> and it's hot for you, uh, as you said to me. Yeah. So it's my pleasure. You. Thank you all very much for coming. To see, to, to see you in July. Yeah, and thank you, Greg, for organizing this. So uh, oh, I no problem. see you in July.